So we can see during the downswing, just as he would externally rotate the right arm, there's gonna be some internal rotation of the left arm. So the left elbow points more down towards the ground during the backswing. And then in transition, we'll talk about why in a minute, the left elbow starts to point a little more away. Now, as my left elbow points away, what happens to the shaft? Shallows. Same thing with my right shoulder external that he does. What happens when I externally rotate my right elbow more towards the ground? It shallows. Now, what if I put those two together? They shallow, right? I wanna to talk to you today about Live View Golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live View is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. Hey guys, Eric here out at the Don Law Golf Academy at beautiful Osprey Point Golf Club in Boca Raton, Florida. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about Ben Hogan magic moves, in particular how the lead arm or left arm in his swing works and how you can utilize it in your own golf swing. Now, a couple quick things before we do get into that video. I am gonna be doing some in-person coaching down here in Boca uh, in the uh, winter time. If you would be interested in coming down, I would love to work with you. We'll put a link down in the description down below. If you can't make it down here, I would still love to work with you through cagornogolf.com. That's where we can work together wherever you are in the world. You could send me your golf swings. We'll build you a customized practice plan. You get all the resources you need, all the master classes, practice plans, uh, community support you need to take your game to the next level you're going to love it. We'll put the link to Cogorno Golf down in the description down below as well. So today's video, like I said, we're talking Ben Hogan. We did the Ben Hogan magic move right elbow video. If you didn't see that, we'll include that as the recommended video at the end of the video. But basically what I want to talk about in this one is the left arm, right? So instead of the right arm. Now, in case you didn't see that video, just to recap uh, what we talked about in that one was his ability to externally rotate his trail arm as well as add the adduction move, right? So it was, hey, his ability to keep the elbow in front of the wrist bone for a long time during his downswing, as well as having the, uh, we'll say the bicep work across the pec. Uh, those were the two moves we had for his magic moves. Again, make sure you check that out. Uh, maybe we'll also include a link down for that one. So with those two pieces in mind, external rotation and adduction, we obviously have two hands, right, and two arms on the club. And so he does the opposite of those with his lead arm very well. Now, before I show you those, let's go ahead and hop over to Analyzer. I'll show you some visuals of what I mean, then I'll come back and explain everything. So a few quick visuals for each piece here. Tommy Fleetwood on the left. I'm just going to draw an arrow down his elbow, roughly where it would point here. And what I want you to see is during the downswing, as he does his transition move, where the elbow points on the way down compared to on the way back. So if we look at the elbow there, we'll call it about here. So do you see what happens in transition? The elbow goes from being pointed more down towards the ground at the top as he transitions, as the lead arm works in against the pec just for that first little part of the downswing to the left arm parallel, that elbow points more away from him. That would be the internal rotation shoulder piece. Now on the right we have Adam Scott. I'm going to draw a line here between his shoulder and his arm, uh, which isn't going to be a perfect representation, but it'll get the point across to show you the angle between the arm and the body. This is the adduction, abduction, the bicep towards the pec um, or the bicep away from the pec. So there we have 77. We'll look at it just as a, about 80 at the top. In transition, that angle is going to get smaller, meaning his left arm is closer to his chest compared to where it was at the top, 45. Now from here, this is where the left arm starts flying off the chest or getting farther. So if we get down to club parallel and we switch colors, now we'll see that the arm's at 60. So it got 
farther from the chest, left arm worked away from the body into this position. And now, of course, it's going to continue working away from the body as we get to impact, back close to where we were at the top. And then it'll get even farther away as we work into the father. So from the top here, from the top position, the left arm gets, uh, left bicep gets closer to the pec. That's the press against part, just until left arm parallel. And then from this point through, the arm's working away from the body all the way through impact. Back to the left side, internal, external piece. The elbow points more down towards the ground at the top. Not the same for every player, but here's where he is. And then now the elbow works more away as the arm presses into the chest, just for that initial two feet during the start of the downswing. Okay, so there we see the checkpoints of these two moves. So with the first movement, we've got the uh, internal, external rotation of the shoulder, right? So if I were to hold my left arm in front of me with my thumb up towards the sky, and I turn my thumb to the right, that would be just forearm rotation. But if I get my thumb all the way down towards the ground, that would be shoulder rotation. So I could rotate this, my forearm, I can go shoulder rotation, thumb all the way to the ground. Now, if I do that to this camera and I go back, the more I do that motion here, you see that changes where my elbow points. So the more my left shoulder would be externally rotated, would be the elbow down towards the ground. The more my shoulders internally rotated, the elbow would point away from me like this, internally rotated. So we can see during the downswing, just as he would externally rotate the right arm, there's gonna be some internal rotation of the left arm. So the left elbow points more down towards the ground during the backswing. And then in transition, we'll talk about why in a minute, the left elbow starts to point a little more away. Now, as my left elbow points away, what happens to the shaft? It's shallows. Same thing with my right shoulder external that he does. What happens when I externally rotate my right elbow more towards the ground? It's shallows. Now, what if I put those two together? They shallow, right? So that would be part number one. And the second piece we talked about, and I'll explain why in a minute, is the right arm working across his body. So as the bicep gets closer to the pec or my center line, that would be adduction, adduction. But now my left arm would work the opposite. If I'm holding the club, my right arm works towards my pec. That means my left hand and arm, my bicep is gonna work away from my pec, abduction, abduction. So that's the second move he does. And you saw in the visuals there, if we look at the top of the swing from Adam Scott, and we use the modern pros just because you see some of the Hogan B-roll we'll put in here. It's hard to see the details with those guys. It was easier. So we can see from here the angle between the shoulders and the arm, which would indicate this angle getting closer or farther apart. We see that when we go to the top, the elbow starts to work away. The arm gets closer to the body. So this arm gets closer to the body, which we'll talk about why in a minute, in early transition to about left arm parallel. And then from there to impact, the arm is progressively moving farther away from his body. So those are the two moves, right? Left shoulder internal rotation, left shoulder abduction, or left arm abduction. Now the first piece is how does the internal rotation happen? How does this left elbow move away and how do you do it? Well, the root, or really the, um, how it starts, should come from good body motion. What I mean by that is if we make our backswing, we get to about left arm parallel on the way back, the transition move where my body is turning towards the target and starting to open as my arms and hands still work up and back is the piece that creates that late adduction. So my left bicep should be pushing into my left pec as I'm doing the last part of my downswing or backswing into downswing. As I'm doing that transition phase, as that chest and shoulders start to open, as my arms and hands pull back, that's the piece that creates a natural internal rotation. If you looked at a baseball player from face on or down the line, you would see this, maybe we'll put an example on here, you see that very well. As they're up here and they start to open their chest with their hands stay back and their left arm pushes against their chest, that pushes the lead shoulder internal, elbow away, which shallows the shaft. That's what Hogan did so well. So as you start to make your backswing, you're starting to feel that left arm pushing into the chest in early transition, only till the arm gets parallel to the ground. From there, it starts to fly off of the chest, creating more distance into impact and past impact. Now, the second piece is the arm piece, right? So 
if we look at the elbow motion, we go up to the top here. I said it's pushing into it, left um, biceps pushing into my pec in early transition till here. Now my elbow should point out outside the ball line, shallow in the shaft. From there, my elbow is gonna start to point towards the target. So my left elbow is gonna stay internally rotated, not external towards my body. The el elbow is gonna stay pointed towards the target all the way till I get to impact. Now as I'm doing that, how I square the club face up is through just normal lead, and you could even see one of the Hogan pictures we have about here, how his left wrist start to bode. The left elbow stays pointed towards the target, the glove, and the logo on the glove just has a normal amount of turn to square the club face up. That's where I can get into my perfect impact position. Elbow still towards the target, the logo of the gloves towards the target, shaft is leaning forward with the face square. That would be perfect. So the elbow from here points away and then towards the target and stays towards the target. The elbow points away and then stays towards the target. All right guys, two quick caveats in terms of this lead arm internal part that I want you to be aware of. When you do it, I do not want you to do it by having the left shoulder raise up real high and I do not want you to do it with the left arm working way out away from you. So when the left elbow works more towards um, the wall or across from you, the left shoulder stays down and the left arm stays in. Left shoulder stays down, left arm stays in as you do it. Not shoulder up, not left arm out, left shoulder down, arm in, elbow away. Now, this arm piece, right, and working in or off the chest. The arm works in on the chest, stays in on the chest till about just the first foot of the downswing. Now it's working off the chest. You don't keep it pinned against your chest forever. It just works into it in early transition. That's the piece that creates the shallowing, the internal, the speed. But now from here, it starts to work off my chest. So once I'm here in my downswing, it's left bicep off my pec, with the left elbow towards the target. Left bicep off my pec, left elbow towards my target. Now, of course, I'm still doing all the other stuff, right? I'm still turning, I'm still tilting, and right? I'm still doing everything else. But in terms of these two components and what did he do so well that allowed him to hit the ball so straight and consistent, he shallowed the shaft beautifully from the lead shoulder internal, trail shoulder external. He kept that lead shoulder internal which allowed him to be completely consistent here at impact, like this, compared to the elbow pointed towards my body here. So those are the pieces he did well that support the right arm movements. And of course, he's able to do those as a reaction to those body motions. So those would be the take homes um, for you. Those would be the left hand and arm feels of where the elbow points away from you, then towards the target. And then in terms of the left arm to the body, it would work into the body and then be flying off of the body. So I would use some of those checkpoints we used in the video, use those as feels. That's what Hogan did to make him so good. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed the video, do us a favor, click that gray thumbs up like button down there. Click subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below. What'd you think about the video? What are some topics you'd like us to cover? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you did like this video, we'll put a recommended video, similar video to this one on the screen. We'll also put the logo for Cagorno Golf. Click that, that'll take you right there. We'd love to work with you there.